about our progression of our project today. We first want to thank our academic advisor, Dr. Lamatora, as well as our technical advisor, Brian Miller and Tyler Douglas, as well as our various sponsors, which you'll see on the slide. So to give a little background, the Drugs of Flying Dragon is a land speed motorcycle designed as an annual endeavor by senior MEM students at Drexel University. This year, the project was broken up into two teams. Our own, who focused on the design of the motorcycle frame and Team 15, which was to focus on the engine. So the aim of the project is to ultimately compete in a land speed racing competition where over two miles straightaway track, participants will aim to achieve the highest top possible speed. Um, the Fly Dragon will compete in a specific class based on its 100cc two-stroke engine. The class has restrictions on the use of bearings as well as many other requirements for the specific class, which Franklin will discuss in more detail later. So our mission for this project is to optimize engine power, improve aerodynamics, and ultimately to achieve a new land speed record, uh, which is currently set at just under 100 miles per hour. Our primary deliverable for the project is to construct a safe and functional motorcycle that, once integrated with the engine, will conform to all of the rules set forth by the East Coast and Southern California Timing Associations. Our secondary goal is then to break the land speed record by achieving at least 100 miles per hour in competition. Uh, our team is organized by assigning each member primary and secondary roles that would focus on a smaller subsystem of the overall design. As the project progressed, our <coughs> duties were then directly integrated with the engine team and a timeline was developed to incorporate the collaborative efforts of both groups. I'll now pass it over to Ed to tell you more about the project. All right, so since we had two teams working on this simultaneously, coordination was a crucial component of this whole design. Um, Liquid Planner was used to coordinate the entire fabrication timeline for this project, as well as Google Drive and Google Hangouts, we'd use that for storing our expenses, designs, and other sponsor documents. So ultimately, the overall result was we were, remained on schedule. There were a few minor setbacks because there was a redesign consideration for the frame. Um, by and large, all the important tasks and components were fulfilled in a timely manner. Um, most importantly, the engine work was finished on time for mating and fabrication to join with the frame. Um, considering our budget, we'd like to thank the generous donations made by our sponsors uh, with their latter contributions above. Uh, the distribution <coughs> of our finances shows that a lot of it was used for the raw materials, the fuel, uh, and then you know fabrication and labor from outside sources to make sure this was uh, completed. The, our, we have an ama amazing remaining balance that we could use to allocate later for transportation, registration, because we do intend on participating in the competitions. So one of the important uh, steps in the engineering process is determine our stakeholders. Uh, we did this by understanding who um, was involved in this project, and we came to the conclusion that Brian Miller, Dr. Lockatora, um, our team and the engine team, uh, as well as Western University, all uh, stakeholders, as well as the motorcycle industry. Uh, so from these stakeholders, uh, we created uh, raw need statements, such as a uh, rider must uh, be able to reach fuel shutoff valve, uh, must attempt to break the land speed record, and conform to all regulations. From these uh, raw need statements, uh, we created uh, specific engineering uh, needs and specifications. Uh, we broke these up into categories, such as controls, tires, and CCA regulations, uh, and they all have a need associated with the spectrum. technical details, I want to uh, throw some definitions out that you might not be familiar with. Uh, first, brake. Brake is the uh, angle at which the, uh, the, the steering line goes through the motorcycle. And trail is the projection on the ground from the center of the wheel to the uh, brake line on the ground. Um, coefficient of drag is the useless value that we'll use when we do uh, computational fluid dynamics. 
So after we understood our target needs and specs, we wanted to first do some market research on some existing solutions for the frame of this motorcycle. We came up with two possible solutions, really. We could customize a stock frame, which you see pictured on the left, well, yeah, on the left, the green one. Or we could custom design and manufacture our own frame, which you see on the right. So with the stock frame, we would have to customize it. Uh, some good things about utilizing a stock frame is that it's already manufactured, so it would significantly cut down on the time of manufacturing and we would not really have to test it for strength as it is a production stock frame. However, it doesn't really meet uh, many of our main target specs, such as our frame height and width, which are uh, really important when we want to consider reducing the drag. When looking at a custom built frame, it does take significantly longer to manufacture. However, we felt that having it meet our target specs that we put forth in the beginning, that it really outweighs that problem and we would hopefully be able to achieve it. From the market research, we decided to make a decision matrix to figure out which kind of custom frame was the best. As you see on the far left, on the far right of your screen, the highlighted in the green is a custom single cradle frame which the motorcycle was built from. And it scored the greatest with heavy consideration on drag reduction and also cost. So when we decided that we were going with a custom single cradle frame, we wanted to point out some big factors that we wanted to make sure we hit on. We wanted our coefficient drag to be minimized as much as possible. Uh, we wanted it also to easily integrate all the components <coughs> of the frame that includes the efforts of the engine team and any mounting points that we need to secure. So before generating our concept, we first wanted, we also wanted to point at some engineering driving factors that really determined the geometry that we could utilize on this frame, such as one spec that we had was our coefficient of drag, we wanted to have less than or equal to 0.55, that is generally the average coefficient of drag for a motorcycle without any fairing, such as ours. What you see here in this picture is the initial concept of our bare frame. It's a custom, it's a single cradle frame as illustrated by the single top and bottom tube. And our front suspension, which we utilize, which you see in front of me. Um, sorry. The front suspension was important to use the girder style because it allows us to use a front fender and the, it really allows us to use the front fender and meet all the rules and regulations that the SCTA and ECTA set for, such as the front fender cannot cover more than 180 degrees of our tire. Well, getting into the methods that we use to tackle this design and the uh, goal. Uh, first, a full model of the motorcycles uh, was made in Korea, uh, which allows us to really check for the clearances and the different subsystems working together to make sure that there weren't any major design flaws uh, before we spent the time and the money on fabrication. Additionally, uh, once the full model was on the bike, including a model of the rider riding the bike, it was taken into CFD analysis uh, to figure out what the theoretical coefficient of drag uh, to see where we would be <coughs> if the design would give us a suitable coefficient of drag to achieve the record. From that analysis, uh, we found that the coefficient of drag was 0 0.46. Uh, the reason the coefficient of drag is so important is because at the higher speeds, like the ones we're trying to reach uh, to break the record, the difference in horsepower given a coefficient of drag becomes exponentially more at the higher speeds. Uh, you can see the coefficient of drag that we obtained uh, glowing in red and also with the thicker line uh, right there in the middle. Uh, as you can see, towards the higher speeds, a small uh, change in the coefficient of drag <coughs> leads to a significant change in the uh, horsepower needed to achieve our goal speed. Additionally, we did structural analysis of the major components in the motorcycle uh, using ANSYS in order to further assure that we're designing a safe and rideable motorcycle uh, during testing in the competition. Uh, furthermore, prototyping and testing was done, uh, including machining multiple iterations of the different components until we felt we had a efficient, structure and uh, structurally safe design uh, for each different component. Uh, this also included rapid prototyping different components, such as the front uh, fender and the uh, brake caliper mount. Since we didn't have a completely accurate uh, model of the brake caliper, it was important to print multiple iterations of the mount for the brake caliper until we could finalize the mounting points and the uh, fasteners that were needed uh, before we did fabrication and wasted material. Uh, once the design was finalized, uh, we went on to choosing what uh, materials were going to use for the different components of the motorcycle. Uh, the frame we chose DOM steel uh, because it's high strength and high Young's modulus. It's also very uniform throughout the entire tube of the bar, so we don't worry about any uh, sections of it being weaker than others. And uh, maybe most importantly, it also fits within budget. Uh, there's materials such as titanium or chromoly that might have a better strength to weight ratio, like given our funds. 
uh, they weren't really uh, an option for us. For the front suspension, since none of the components need to be welded, uh, aluminum is pretty hard to weld. Uh, but since we were just using fasteners to keep the front suspension intact, uh, we chose aluminum. It's also lightweight and cheap and easy to machine uh, due to its properties. Uh, going back to the front uh, fender, uh, originally it was prototyped uh, using PLA material and the 3D printers in the UG lab. Uh, once we finalized the design, made sure that it had a proper clearance and met the regulations, it was wrapped in fiberglass in order to uh, increase strength. The mold was just used as a, or the printed uh, fender was just used as a mold, uh, which was removed later, as you can see on the board. Uh, it was then coated with body filler in order to get rid of any of the major imperfections that we might uh, increase the drag coefficient. So after um, all these uh, uh, prototyping, uh, we had to test to see if these prototypes would work. Um, a lot of machine components uh, we actually had to remake uh, because we thought that uh, they wouldn't be strong enough or they wouldn't meet the specs that we had internally. Um, some of the things that we went through multiple iterations of were the uh, bracket locations, uh, we also increased uh, frame strength by adding gussets, and we worked with the engine team very uh, strongly to uh, optimize engine location. Uh, furthermore, uh, after we completed our full-scale CAD model, uh, we created a full-scale plot in which we used that plot to uh, uh, make our frame in real life. Um, one of the key uh, aspects of this project was to actually assemble a functional prototype. Uh, we used a lot of different techniques, such as uh, using the machine shop uh, that was graciously provided by Drexel. We used the CNC machine, we used the lathe. Um, actually, it was, it was almost a daily occurrence for us. Um, we actually uh, welded the frame, uh, thanks to some of our skillful members. Uh, we used grinder and different various tools that, were, uh, that we were allowed to use. So uh, on your uh, right, uh, this is a um, this is our first mock-up frame. So in this image, the frame is actually just tacked into position, uh, just to see if it's in uh, if it's aligned with uh, the front and rear wheel. Uh, it's important that the frame is plumb with itself. Uh, and then after it's aligned, there would be a, a strength welds made over the tack welds. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, one of the engine team uh, members on the motorcycle seeing that it's uh, it's in a comfortable position. Um, and we had gone through a lot of uh, different iterations. It's hard to model uh, comfort in the CAD model. Uh, so we had to really see where the rider would be more comfortable, uh, where his uh, uh, knees were, where his elbows were. So these were all uh, significant, significant considerations. Um, as you can see on the left, uh, that is a fender that um, recently was epoxy. In the center is our uh, painted frame. Right is uh, an image of the suspension. Okay. This is um, the f uh, prototype that we had created. Uh, from that, we then refined it to our final product, uh, which included uh, cleaning up all the different uh, uh, cables that we needed to, uh, to something that we were comfortable with uh, calling our final product. And as you can see right here, uh, we have our final product, which we are very proud of. So now we can look at the macro level contributions of this frame. And economically speaking, we were able to do high performance research using a non-funded team. Uh, likewise, going off the economic standpoint, we came up with an original frame design and fabricated using raw materials. Because we did this, we were able to significantly cut down costs of production when you want to compare it to a production frame that was already made. Likewise, similarly with the engine, we ended up refurbishing a used engine and using and operating our bike with that as opposed to sourcing out a brand new engine which would blow our budget out of proportions. So from a social standpoint, uh, this project, um, oh, okay, we, we motivate and stimulate the drive for land speed racing and because it's a leading and popular field of interest, it shows that this is within realm of possibility that we can perform this bike above the already set standards. And if we look at the environmental impact and considerations of this whole pro project, we can consider that our fabrication methods were done in a non-toxic, non-hazardous form. And we used a minimalist approach in which we tried to 
minimize the amount of waste material. So from an ethical standpoint, uh, rider safety was a top priority with this build. And because of that, structural integrity of the bike was one of the most important co uh, components. Um, if we also want to go back to the ethical standpoint and considerations with any design team, it's important to acknowledge every single partner and sponsor that contributed to the making of this project. Um, with any real major project build, there's more than one component and party that is associated with the success. So, stressing on the safety of this motorcycle, a big part of it was making sure that the frame would not fall apart. And for additional reinforcement and supports, we added additional steel tubing junctions, uh, gusset plates, like you can see here, just to make sure we could minimize any flexor bending as much as we can. And for the SEC <coughs> and ECTA regulations, uh, they do require a full protective suit that was fire retardant and had built-in skid blades, and Chris will be wearing a full face helmet. Let's get into the discussion. What we learned from this project uh, is mainly the importance of doing a full CAD model prior to design, or prior to fabrication of the design, which allowed us to see any major design flaws prior to wasting money or time. Also, the allocation of time is important to keep the project on task and uh, completed in time. Uh, we also have to adapt to a uh, evolving design. While you might have a full scale plot of the uh, motorcycle, things don't always go smoothly in uh, fabrication, so it's important to adapt to that and you know, re-engineer or re-engineer the parts if need be. Uh, so in summary, uh, the main goal of this project was achieved, which was to uh, construct a safe uh, motorcycle that met with the ECTA and SCT regulations. The secondary goal of trying to break the land speed record will be tested uh, in June. Uh, theoretically, given the horsepower achieved by the engine team, we should be able to reach around 120 miles an hour. Uh, again, it's theoretical, but it gives us 20 miles an hour uh, of losses or experimental uh, changes to still break the record. Uh, also, the rider feels comfortable on the motorcycle and in a position that he can operate it safely. Uh, again, the, cat, the concept generated uh, met the ECT and SCT reg regulations, but also specifications uh, from the team itself, such as having a coefficient of drag of less than 0.55. Uh, and the detailed design was completed, including the fabrication and uh, the inner workings of different components of the motorcycle. So for future work, I would look to further reduce the weight of the motorcycle. Uh, the front suspension still has some pretty bulky uh, parts, for instance, uh, so we'll be able to grind those down and shell the components to further reduce weight. Uh, we'll also look to replace some of the uh, rapid prototype parts with lighter weight components, such as changing the front fender to uh, carbon fiber, which is lighter than the body filler, plus uh, fiberglass. Uh, if it's within budget, we could change the frame to more lighter weight uh, alloys, such as titanium uh, or chromoly, uh, again, to reduce weight. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge Team 15 uh, for their efforts, Dr. Lockator, our advisors, and also our sponsors. References and any questions? So uh, suspension is one of the most crucial parts of the stability of a motorcycle. Um, and if there's any flex there, or if there's any uh, aspects that are unpredictable to the rider, it can actually be even more dangerous than a mechanical. Uh, and second one is, can I see a live demonstration of this? Uh, no, uh, we will not turn it on here. No, 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 I just want to see Skyler. Me? <laughs> I want to run it. Get on there. Nah. <laughs> it's not part of the same fit. Of course, that is, but I don't go to school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I was wondering if you could talk about the uh, design of the bike itself.
said you had to do a redesign. Why? Yeah, so our first, uh, our first <coughs> proposal, we actually um, wanted to do an aluminum frame. Uh, but then we ran into different um, different aspects in the manufacturing of that. Um, although aluminum is difficult to weld, it, it is weldable. Um, but that would have been out of our uh, ability range. And this was something that we could have done uh, within our means, which would have very uh, effective. Lines drawn from the different outputs of the equation at different speeds, uh, which the equation is in a later slide. Okay, so, oh, so those are those are theoretical predict theoretical predictions. Yeah, right. Yeah, just for our frontal area. Yeah, just to show the effect of coefficient of drag uh, on the power needed to overcome that drag. Okay, so and, and explain to me again exactly how you verify experimentally or in simulation the fact that you have to factor G. Where's your experimental yeah, so, or so simulation data that supports this? Yeah, during our, uh, uh, computer, um, yeah. our fluid dynamics model, uh, we actually achieved a uh, coefficient of drag of 0.46. And so what are the, so, so this is based on, this is a simulation, yeah, right? right? The simulated results, okay. So what went into the actual model? Um, what are the assumptions you made? So, yeah, some of the assumptions we made. The simulation results. Yeah. Due, due to the detailedness of the design, the motorcycle is actually quite detailed. The rider was uh, made of cylinders and rectangles. So that is an assumption that we made. Of course, uh, there are wrinkles on his clothes. His legs aren't cylinders. But we also strive to get the lowest coefficient drag. We strive to get the most power output to give us enough of a cushion, like you said, to make up for some of the assumptions that we we're making. Uh, we have over just over 20 miles an hour of cushion, uh, you could say, to break the record. Yeah, so, yeah. so we feel well, we're, we're, we're not planning to actually hit 120 miles an hour, but we feel, given the coefficient of drag and power output achieved, that we have plenty of, I guess, cushion to make up for those losses. And, and this is for the final. So, how many times did you run this analysis? Because you um, have different iterations. Yes, there are multiple iterations, and each time uh, we made iterations on the frame. Uh, and uh, fender geometry and suspension height uh, in the computational fluid. But, but basically, the analysis was run for a given set of parameters. You did not do it. So you didn't say, this is this iteration, and I ran it for a whole collection of parameters. So instead, you picked a, a higher speed as the way to, to yeah, account for the because, errors. Because that's, uh, the higher speeds, that's when the wind resistance affects the motorcycle the most. So we figured if you're gonna test that 20 miles per hour, there's very minimal difference in the coefficient of drag there, but when you get it to 100 miles per hour, as we as was shown in the graph, it rises expansion. So let me ask um, two quick questions. One is about your specifications, and one is about detail. So for the, spe for the specs, you mentioned uh, 0.55 is your goal, saying that ah, that was the effort density. Was that good enough for you? Maybe you don't mean that, that was your ideal specification. Maybe that was your marginal. That, yeah, that, I guess that was our marginal because that was the average. So we wanted it to be less than, or, even, or at least equal to, to be able to try and strive for it. Uh, yeah. So it was more of a ballpark number rather well, than aiming for so we were gonna, as a threshold. So if we were going to beat our build our own custom frame, we wanted it to be better than a frame that we could build or just buy from, uh, you know, from a manufacturer. So the 0.55 is below the coefficient drags, like a uh, previous slide, it's around 0.6 for customer so is, frames. So you had alternatives on the table that would be 0.55, and to go through all the effort of making your own, you at least had to be there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I, I think that's a, that's a more full explanation of where that number came okay. from. The other one is uh, maybe being asked out of ignorance, but I'm curious, uh, if you're only allowed to cover 180 degrees of the front fairing, I'm in a windy rainstorm. I naturally aim my umbrella into the wind. Yeah. So why not rotate that forward by say 20 degrees so that it's yes. having more of an effect on the incoming? Why not put 
uh, some fairings over the handlebars? Why not make uh, the wheels yes. solid? Yes, so um, all of these points are addressed in the regulations. Disc wheels is something that clearly optimizes uh, the grid turbulence around the wheel. That's something that's against our class. What if you just like keep cardboard? To We're not allowed to. We're not allowed to have disc okay. wheels at all. And uh, fenders yeah. actually, you're, we have a regulation that has to be a certain amount above the amount of inches above the ground. If it's too low, uh, then we don't pass yeah. that. So they were pretty there's, stringent on there's no use of fairings. Yeah. Cool. Okay, fair enough. So let's thank our team.